皆様、この度はオンデマンド動画プログラム、聞こえの未来をご視聴いただきまして、誠にありがとうございます。この動画プログラムは、茨城大学教育学部、障害児、生理学研究室とオーティコン補聴器が共同主催しています。進行を務めさせていただきます。オーティコン補聴器、田中と申します。そして、茨城大学教育学部のタバルです。よろしくお願いいたします。この動画は全部で5回シリーズで配信いたします。第1回は、聴覚研究の最前線、エリックスホルム研究センターと題し、オーティコン補聴器の関連研究所であるエリックスホルム研究センターの主任研究員、ヘンチ・イネス・ブラウン博士からお話をお伺いします。ところで、タバル先生は、科研費を取得され、2022年8月からデンマークの方に1年間研究留学されたと思うんですけれども、あのこのご経験が本動画を配信しようとしたきっかけになったんでしょうか。はい、デンマークで最先端の研究を見ることで、今回のタイトルである聞こえの未来に少しだけ触れることができて、非常にワクワクしました。今回は特に、聴覚障害のあるお子さんに関わっていらっしゃる方々にもこの気持ちを共有したくてオーティコン補聴器様の力を借りてこのプログラムを企画させてもらいましたで、1回目の動画ではその未来を生み出している研究機関の一つであるエリクスホルム研究センターについてご紹介したいと思いますタバル先生ありがとうございました実は9月にオーティコン補聴器国際シンポジウム2023を開催し、聴覚ケアはヘルスケアというテーマで、専門家の先生方にご講演いただきました。タバル先生のご講演の様子はオンデマンド動画で配信しています。ご興味のある方は、こちらからお申し込みください。それでは皆様、第1回動画、聴覚研究の最前線エリックスホルム研究センターをどうぞお楽しみください。ファーストボール、Thank you for joining this video project。And it's my great pleasure to introduce you and your excellent work to Japanese people、yeah,。So in this video, could you tell us about your institution?、Uh, so エリックスホルム、what is エリックスホルム research center? Sure, well, it's very nice to be here. Thank you for the invitation.、Um, so, my, I work at Ericsson Research Center, which is part of Oticon, the hearing aid company,、um, and we exist to do translational research, which is aimed at advancing the scientific understanding and treatment of hearing loss.、Mm -hmm. So, we tend to do research that's quite long in scope,、um, five to ten years、mm -hmm. uh, time horizon between. When we start a project and when we can deliver some kind of new understanding about,、mm -hmm. uh, about the treatment of hearing loss.、Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. But I think the Oticon headquarters also has a research team, but how does your work differ from that?、Mm. Mm. So, yeah, Oticon、um, headquarters has, has quite a big research team、um, that's very involved in. Testing the hearing aids themselves.、Mm -hmm. So they figure out whether the new release hearing aids are better than the old ones or、mm -hmm. how much better、mm -hmm. they are.、Mm -hmm. um, they figure out if, if the hearing aids are doing what they're supposed to be doing、um, and how we can describe their impact in the markets.、Um, but at Eric's Home, what we do is more discovery level research. So we typically Uh, searching for a new understanding about how the brain works, about how the auditory system works.、Um, and we don't necessarily use Oticon hearing aids in that process.、Mm -hmm. So sometimes we even test people with normal hearing,、um, younger people, older people,、um, and, and of course people with hearing aids as well.、Um, but our main purpose is to reach some new level of understanding about hearing loss itself.、Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think there is a, probably a lot of trial and error in the pre developmental phase, but could you tell us some e p i s o d e about that? 
Yeah, well, of course, with any kind of scientific project where you start out with a research question, um, very often, well, always, you don't know the answer. You don't know how it will turn out. Um, and the research that Ericsholm undertakes is, is usually of quite high risk. So we really don't know what the answer is going to be. Um, and quite a lot of the time, um, the results that we get uh, are not as we expect. Um, a recent example I could think of is um, we've used pupillometry for, for many years now to look at measuring listening effort in people with hearing aids. So we assess um, people's the dilation mm -hmm. response of, of the pupils um, in response to listening to sentences in different levels of background noise. And from that we can uh, understand how much effort someone is putting into, into the understanding task. So we've done that with people with normal hearing and, and people using hearing aids for, for quite some time now and, and have developed that technology to the point where it's quite easily used. We can use it to see the difference between two different types of signal processing, for mm -hmm. example, or to test whether one hearing aid uh, has, can result in lower listening effort than another hearing aid. But an example of where uh, we were surprised by results is when we tried this technology with um, people using cochlear implants. Mm -hmm. um, this was back when Oticon Medical was, was more active in what we were doing. And when we just tried using pupillometry in people with cochlear implants for the first time, the results were completely not as we expected. Um, and it took us several years, three or f even five years to discover um, why that was. And it turned out that um, it's quite simple in the end that people with cochlear implants are basically always putting in a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. And so we never we never could measure, we could only measure the high effort mm -hmm. condition mm -hmm. in, in people with cochlear implants. So that's an example of, of something that we learnt that, that we weren't expecting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thanks. But uh, it's encouraging to know uh, top researcher like you also conducting a trial and error. And uh, thanks to your effort, we can get a uh, very great knowledge about hearing systems or we can get a very great function of hearing aid. みなさま、いかがでしたでしょうか第1回動画、聴覚研究の最前線、エリクスホルム研究センターをご視聴いただきまして、誠にありがとうございました。第2回は、音を聞くと疲れるって本当というタイトルで、最新の考え方であるリス